Welcome. This is Psychology Today, and I'm your host, Ann Morrill. This is a show about bicycling in general, but specifically about bicycle safety. Thank you for joining us. And thanks to our crew of volunteers who are working in the control booth and making this show happen. We really appreciate their efforts, without whom we would not be here. And I want to thank our viewers for your support for Northwest Bicycle Safety Council, the sponsor of this show, and I hope that we provide some good information for you. We have two guests. Kathy Hellam is a spinning class instructor, and if you don't know what a spin class is, then you're going to learn a lot tonight. And I think that it'll help you become a better cyclist or maybe become just plain a bicyclist. If you've been watching the show and wishing you could get out on the road and join us, maybe a spin class is just what you need to help you get out on the road. And our second guest is Aaron Miller, who's the principal at Vernonia Elementary in Vernonia, Oregon, of course. And he's going to talk to us about having Northwest Bicycle Safety Council come out in 2013 and share the uh, bike fair and helmet fittings with his students and we'll learn how what that means to him and and share with you what Northwest Bicycle Safety Council does out in the community. First is kind of a safety issue I want to just kind of share a little information about bicycle safety. I'm really involved with Portland Wheelman Touring Club and some of one of our members shared a, a story about being out in the Troutdale area and riding their bikes and there was a group of them and three of them were riding three abreast out uh, by the old Troutdale airport there, the little airport. And by riding three abreast that put one of the cyclists outside the bike lane. And they were stopped by the police out there and they were told that, you know, if the law is if there's a designated bicycle lane, the bicyclist needs to be in the bike lane. And he, the officer explained that if there was a citation was issued, that fine would be $115 out there in the yeah, Troutdale like area. And the rumor has it that in Salem, a citation for that infraction is $260. The defense, according to the Oregon statute, is that the bike lane is unsafe, and so therefore you had to use the other lane of travel. So to quote bicycle attorney Ray Thomas from his book, Pedal Power, a legal guide for Oregon bicyclists, if a bicycle lane is available, the law requires riders to use it, except when necessary to avoid a hazard or to make a turn. And so that's paraphrasing ORS 814.420. And by the way, that Pedal Power uh, book in its entirety is available through Northwest Bicycle Safety Council's website, which you, you will see on your TV screen throughout the show. If you access our website, you can pull down resources and review that book and learn some of the laws. So I'd encourage you to look for yourself. Now this conversation, I guess, with the police officer out at Troutdale was very cordial. It was a really nice dialogue. But the officer was really concerned about the cyclists because a lot of semi-trucks drive around that airport out there. And he was really concerned about the bicyclists being in the, the automobile lane of traffic rather than their designated bicycle lane. So I wanted to share that with you to help keep your money in your wallet and keep you safe as well. And certainly... Um, we want cyclists, as cyclists, we ask for laws to protect us, but when those laws are instituted through the state, then we need to obey the laws, and that's one of them, to use the designated bicycle lane. It looks like a shadow. And as our president, Bruce Buffington, of Northwest Bicycle Safety Council, always admonishes us to obey the law, you need to know the law. And you can access the law through that Pedal Power book, you can go down to the DMV and get the Oregon Bicyclist Manual, and ODOT has the Oregon Pedestrian Bicycle and Driver Rules. So there's a lot of ways to learn the law. So that's my little bit about safety. Let's meet our first guest, and it's Kath Kathleen Helm, Kathy. And greetings, Kathy. Hey, thank you. I'm glad that you could join me. Um, I wanted to encourage bicycle riders and prospective riders to try a spin class. And we'll, again, we'll get to the definition of that, either to get in riding shape or to stay in shape for the upcoming bicycle season in next spring. But let's start with an introduction. Why don't you tell us how you came to be in the Portland area? Thanks, Ann. Um, I was born in Seattle, Washington, and my family's from the Seattle, Portland area, and my mom's here in this part of the country, so I'm here with her. So you, family. Family. That yeah. often brings yep. you, t 
takes you places. Now, what's your bicycling background? I started riding mountain bike um, in 95 for about a year. And then, this is down in Arizona where I lived. Um, and then I went ahead and it, I did wipe out quite a bit and <laughs> cut my elbow pretty good. And I just decided to switch over to road biking. Um, so I sold my mountain bike to a coworker and got into road riding and pretty much did that up, up to um, 2000. And then I put my bike down for about a decade. Uh huh. So it's not good. Um, and then I just pretty much picked it back up about two and a half years ago. And so here we are. Well, and you just started cyclocross this, this season. Yeah. So you ventured into something entirely different. Yeah, that's, that's right. It's, it's not as, um, as dangerous as mountain biking. It's a little e easier, I think. Uh -huh. It's a trail that's kind of paved out for you. It's not like you're yeah, in the desert track. mountains, yeah. you know, navigating big rocks. Uh -huh. and, well, good for you, and, that, yeah. and I think that's a good example for us that, you know, there's lots of different kinds of cycling and getting out of your comfort zone and Definitely and showing up and doing that is what you got to do. <laughs> exactly. So let's um, start with a, a definition. We talk about spin classes and people joke about, what, you know, what that, like you're knitting or spinning, spinning wool or something like that. So what is a spin class? Well, it's indoor cycling is basically what it is. Spin, spin class is more of a slang term mm -hmm. um, for indoor cycling, but it's basically a spin class in my opinion. And it's a stationary bike. Um, it's a 15 to 20 pound flywheel that's controlled by magnet. Okay. So when you go to adjust your gear, whether you're turning a dial or adding a little nudge to your paddle, it's taking that magnet and closing it in on that flywheel. Uh -huh creating a lot of resistance. So it's a, a very high quality bike. Yeah. <clears throat> For the most part, most of your gyms will have high quality bikes. Uh-huh. Um, and it's it's a good little training unit to, you know, really leave a lot of calories behind and <laughs> <laughs> definitely work on some it'll keep you in shape. Absolutely. And and you you teach us a, a spinning class in Vancouver and that's where I met you and, and so I've been attending your class. Um, how did you come to be a, a spin instructor? Well, that's, um, yeah, that's kind of a funny story. <clears throat> um, when I first picked up my bike again, um, I was a little worried because winter was coming and I didn't, I, I don't know, I didn't want to, I didn't want to go back to the way it was where I wasn't riding my bike and I wanted to make sure that I stayed completely fit. I wanted to stay in shape. Uh -huh. That's the bottom line. And I, I just, um, I figured I could use the extra money and I just went ahead and applied and, you know, the, the lady hired me at the gym and the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, that's, yeah. that seems pretty simple. Yeah. Well, tell us about your first spinning class in which you weren't an instructor, that you attended getting into spin classes. It was hard. That was mm -hmm. back in Arizona when I attended spin, spin classes because uh -huh. um, I lived there for about 11 years. So that's where most of my biking cycling has been. Um, and it was very hard. My, my first class, it was, it was really hard and a big struggle. I remember being a, the person who was there for the first time uh -huh. and going through that. And it, it, was very, it was very hard. It's not an easy class. No, There's it just isn't. No, and yeah. we'll, we'll talk about that a little later. But to look into a spin class at, at your local gym, it looks pretty intense. And right. It's intimidating. And you might think, ooh, I'm not ready for that. Right. But maybe you are, and hopefully we can, we can talk about that a little later. And um, so l let's talk about encouraging others to try a spin class. And, and I wanted to share an anecdote because that's kind of why I wanted you to be a guest, is I lead really easy bicycle rides. And a woman a few years ago came out on my easy, out by Vancouver Lake, flat as a pancake, not very long. Mm -hmm. She did awesome. And in talking to her, she hadn't been on her bicycle forever. And she had just gotten a brand new bike, but she'd been going to spin classes. And here she was in great shape, able to ride. She left my easy beginning class. That was the only one she ever did. And she went on to do whatever ride she wanted to do that summer sure. because she was ready to ride. And in fact, um, she joined Portland Wheelman and I think that year got the Most Improved New Rider Award <laughs> because she was so good. It was really impressive and it showed me how beneficial just spin classes could be in getting you in shape 
and getting you ready to ride. It's incredible. Or keeping you in shape, yeah. Right. And of course you only get out of it what you put into it, but still, just that, that notion. So like we talked about, getting to that first class can be intimidating. So let's talk about what to expect so that we're more confident going into that room. What should we bring to a spin class? Water bottle, towel, um, t-shirt, shorts. Okay. The, um, they have these um, seat covers that you can buy at Big Five or any store, uh -huh. <clears throat> um, Walmart, big store, that covers the seat if you don't think that the seat's oh, soft enough. Okay. Because your saddle definitely will be, you'll be sore. Uh-huh. Because they're kind of big seats. Yeah. Um, comfortable, you want to be comfortable, especially if you're carrying a lot of extra weight. You uh -huh. want to maybe just keep it kind of loose and so you're comfortable and you can get through that class. Don't give up, you know. Yeah. Stay the full hour. So if we're not a cyclist yet mm -hmm. with a real bike, we might not have cycling shorts. So just some real comfortable shorts right. that don't have a big seam in them that you're going to be sitting on for right. an hour. Something loose and a, a baggy t-shirt maybe. Tank top, t-shirt, uh -huh. um, whatever, you know, just so that you're very comfortable and you're not having to, <clears throat> you know, you're not uncomfortable in the cl clothing that you're wearing. That's going to affect your workout. Yeah. Because you're not going to be thinking about what you need to be doing. Yeah. You're going to be focusing on, you know, oh, do I look okay, which is, keeps people out of the gym, frankly, uh -huh. is they worry too much about, oh, I don't look good enough to go to yeah. the gym. So, and we, we don't <laughs> want that. No. And you, and your, um, and, and a water bottle, like you said, a towel because you might perspire. You're going to perspire. And so you want <laughs> yeah. to be more comfortable. You're going to be mopping your face and very much so. Things like that. Yep. And that, that helps you be comfortable. Now, the shoes, um, some of those, some of them have pedals that you can clip in, just like some of us do on our outdoor bikes, mm -hmm. but that's not a necessity. It's not. Um, the straps that the, the straps that they have on the pedal, uh -huh. also known as like a clip, um, they actually tighten down well enough to where when you are doing your rotation, you can actually pull up in the back to get that upswing, uh -huh. so that you're actually doing the right pressure where you need to do it when you're pushing down and pulling up in the back. It, it'll actually, if your foot is in there correctly, the ball of your foot's where it needs to be, which mm -hmm. is what I'm there to help you do. Yeah, you can work without having the SPD right. shoes. Right. Right. But if you want cycling shoes, uh -huh. um, they have indoor cycling shoes. Um, very inexpensive, oh, okay. very inexpensive. Uh -huh. um, there's a lot of different ways you can get those online. It's not like it's too expensive. It could be worth it if uh -huh. that's what you want, maybe a little more stability. Yeah, yeah. But you certainly don't need to. So it can be very low tech to start You can out. make it very inexpensive. Or you can go really high tech. If, if you you're wish. a regular <laughs> cyclist, you can wear your whole gear. Some people do. <laughs> Okay. Um, now, as an instructor, uh, one thing I think I know on regular bike rides, I encourage people to go to the to the leader, to the instructor, and say, "I'm new at this." Mm -hmm. And and would you encourage that too? Absolutely. Yeah, I always ask um, if there's anybody here for their first, second, third time, because uh -huh. that's usually the time where they're not they haven't remembered where their yes. seat needs to be, why it needs to be a certain way. Um, so I always make sure, and, and any instructor should always make sure, and if, if they don't, you need to obviously step up and say, I'm new and I need help. I mean, usually a good instructor is going to ask yeah. before they start class. That's, and, and so what are those adjustments that a person might make to the bike and why? Well, you want to make sure that your seat is at the top of your hip, so you, that way you're not, um, so when you're standing next to your your saddle, your mm -hmm. the top of your hip bone should actually be level to that saddle. Okay. Um, you want to make sure that you're not hyper extending your leg. Mm -hmm. You always want to certainly make sure that because you don't want to be rolling your hips. So yeah. You want to make sure that you're nice and stable. You're not hyper extending your leg. Um, you just have a little tiny bend in your leg, mm -hmm. just a little one. You want to make sure that your seat's forward enough so that you're actually utilizing the full muscle group from the top of your leg down to your kneecap. You don't uh -huh. want to just be using half of your leg muscles. Uh -huh. And if your seat's not adjusted right and it's too far back, you're going to not be actually using the full okay. quad. Uh -huh. So you just want to make sure that you're, you know, that you're adjusted right. Even if it makes you feel a little bit kind of pinned in and crouched over, it's okay because uh -huh. that's how it's supposed to be. That's the correct way. Okay. 
and and so the the seat height to the pedals, and then the um, the bars, the handlebar type things, that kind of moves back and forth yes, as well. Yes, it does. Good point. So I guess if you're an outdoor cyclist, such as yourself um, and myself, usually we are used to having the bars a little lower. Mm -hmm. um, with these indoor cycles, um, I tend to keep mine at about a three, so it's not way high up, but uh -huh. I do keep it up a little bit because we do a lot of out, out of saddle. Yeah. More so you're out for a longer period of time than you would be, say, out on the road. Yeah. When you're climbing a hill, mm -hmm. you're going to maybe get out at the very top of that hill to finish it off, but so um, that's adjustable too. It's easier on your neck, your shoulders, if you have that up so that you're not, you know, Especially yeah, if you're almost, right mm -hmm. newer at spin class, as time goes on, you can adjust it and make it so it's more comfortable for okay. you. Okay. Now, talking about these things, um, if, and if I'm not in great shape, and I don't want to kill myself, again, you look into those classes, and they are pedaling furiously. Maybe I'm not in great shape. Maybe I'm. Uh, how do I pace myself? Can I can I do that? Just kind of back off and test the waters so to speak absolutely I mean when you're in, in in any spin class you know the recommendations that instructors make are just that they are uh -huh. recommendations um, for example if somebody's somewhat new to spin classes um, I know that they are not and nor do I expect them to say stay out of a saddle for long like for a whole song for example uh -huh. maybe they're gonna have to sit back down and then maybe get back up again. Uh -huh. And this is totally normal. Yeah. Totally expected. And they should, you know, and they, and they know that going and that they're not expected to do when they're first starting out all the things that everyone else does. Uh -huh. Because it's a lot of hard work. And if you haven't done it, it it'll wipe you out. If, if you don't have the will. endurance to mm -hmm. do it, it's gonna, you're not going to be able to, to pull it off. And unless you've been either running a lot yeah. or doing this massive cardio, uh -huh. you know, chances are pretty strong you're going to be a little overwhelmed by that so but not to let it discourage you just know that mm -hmm. that's normal and to keep coming back to class and, and I think that's really the beauty of spinning that you can do whatever works for you at any given moment maybe you're just having a bad day maybe you're new and not like you're saying not quite ready for it but you can just do what you want to do where some of the other classes that you're up on your feet you really have to keep going I mean you can't back off and just spin just gently spin and you've got to keep going hard you so, sure do. so this is a good way to ease into fitness I think I do too I think it's an excellent way to exercise especially you know if you like to ride your bike outside this is mm -hmm. definitely going to be a good class to be in if providing too that you you know try many different instructors find somebody who rides outside that's you know, a big thing if you're trying to learn to ride outside, you maybe want to train with someone who's who, who trains for that. I train for that myself in uh -huh. my class. Everything I do is geared towards what we do out there. Okay. But I go to other classes, and it's great, too. It's just a mm -hmm. totally different thing. Like, some of them are up. They're out of the saddle for a long time. I, I don't choose to do that uh -huh. in my class. We stay in the saddle a lot of the time. Yeah. But sometimes it's fun to take other classes, and other classes just have different, a whole different platform, and that's fun yeah but depending on but it, try as many as instructors as you can because it helps to get a little diversity so speaking of instructors what should we look for in an instructor just like anything a doctor an attorney anything you know you might not really gel with a particular person or they might not be good they they might not so what are we looking for well that's a good good question and um, I think it's really important to make sure that you are with someone who's certified that's one good thing. At least they're staying up to date on the, what's new, and uh -huh. they're, they have their certification, their license. They know CPR if something should happen to you. Um, somebody who's um, who has um, who, who gets off their bike and helps you with your with you. They uh -huh. see you're struggling. They're there to assist you. Someone who makes sure that you're hydrated. Someone who pushes you, yeah. obviously. And somebody who knows what they're doing primarily, you know, knows about yeah. the posture, getting the most out of your workout. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, anybody can go into yeah. and mash pedal. And <laughs> I can that, do that. Why? Who wants to do that? <laughs> you, I yell all the time. Yes. Get the workout. Don't come in here and just, you know, spin your wheels. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you, you are really good that way. And, you know, I just kind of wanted to toss in, it kind of occurred to me that we happen to be two women sitting here talking about a spin class. But these are all co-ed classes. Um, so we're talking about men and women, yep. right? 
there there's just a variety of different people and shapes and sizes um, and, and speaking of that and we kind of touched on this what if I'm not fit you know a lot of times we well I'll go to that class when sure after I get a little more fit or after I drop a few pounds Let me I'll, lose 10 I'll try pounds. that yeah <laughs> wait until things are a little better what would you say to that rationale yeah and that that's a that's a really good because that seems to be the big thing with a lot of people going to the gym is they just don't they don't have the right outfit or they yeah <laughs> and in, in spin class it's a mean mean class mm -hmm. and no one's there smiling looking cute looking pretty um, I look around all the time at the students I don't have a mirror so I can't see myself yeah when I'm <laughs> But they can all see them themselves. Uh -huh. and they're pretty focused on themselves. Yeah. And it's just, you know, everybody really just, they just let it all hang, hang out, mm -hmm. really. I mean, there's not a lot of smiling. People are working hard. They're trying to accomplish something, you know, and they're, and they're, it's nothing pretty about it. And I think that's good. I think that that's what we need is we need to be able to go in there and do the work and not yeah. worry about, is my hair yeah, in place? My hair. Is my, mm -hmm. you know, um, Oh, you know, oh, I mean, and so see with the spin class, you're, you're going to have people in there that, you know, they're not there to make friends really or smile a lot. They're there to work. And then afterwards, it's a job well done and everybody feels good afterwards. Yeah. Everybody knows we all did a good job. We're, yeah. We're, we all did what we needed. We came in there, we did what we needed to do and we left. And, and I've know? found that to be true, that it's an encouraging group. You know, people are encouraging to one another, yes, and and not concerned at all about appearances or size or anything. Just you know, we're right. here to help you. You're here. Come out back to the class. Things like that. Mm -hmm. It's really impressive. Yeah, especially when you're doing a an interval and you're doing a, a massive you know spin. Uh huh. I mean, if you have a lot of excess body weight that's going to jiggle around, that's normal. I mean, yeah. everybody has to put up with it. It's yeah. there. It's going to mm -hmm. happen. Mm -hmm. It, you're in a, you're in a good place. You're, yeah. you're in a safe place in a spin class. Yes, that's, that's a good the way bottom of line. It. Yeah, you're in a safe place. Yep. So, t why don't you kind of describe a class for us, just kind of generally? What what kinds of things do you take a person through? And this, these are your classes, like you say. Somebody mm -hmm. else's classes might vary, but what what do you take people through? Sure. Yeah. Um, well, I usually start everybody out with a nice little warm up, which you've been to uh -huh. my class, and you know how that warm up goes. Um, and then what I typically do is I'll just, interval training is kind of where, where I'm at with my class. Um, I believe in interval training. I, I believe in the science of it. I believe that when we push ourselves um, really hard, we release that growth hormone that helps us burn more fat in the long run um, versus just an hour-long class of pedaling. We, uh -huh. we don't do that. Um, our heart rate, you know, we take it all the way up and, you know, we bring it back down and a little recovery. Work to recover is pretty much my my theme uh -huh. in my class, and um, I throw in some hills and yeah. I throw in some, you know, some good seated climbs, and mm -hmm. and I, you know, I, I just work a, as hard as I work as hard as I physically you can. You absolutely do, yeah. And so, and I and I play it somewhat by ear. I don't want it to ever be. Um, What's a word? Just a routine, maybe. It's never a routine. When I you, walk in there, I have no that. idea it's going to happen. I, I just know it's, it's like a brand new okay. thing for me and for the students, and it just kind of flows the way it should. And, and it, yeah. I've noticed. Yeah. And music, and it's mm -hmm. fun. It's just outstanding, exciting, and it's neat. It is, and I think um, I've heard people comment, and I felt that that hour goes really fast, mm -hmm. and, and the last few minutes are stretching, and that's often the case in a spin class is that you kind of stretch your muscles after, so it's not entirely 60 minutes of riding, but but yeah, I mean, there's there's great music and just a variety of things, and up and down out of the saddle, yep. and just pushing yourself, but yet with the permission to back off if it's not working out for you, you don't, you know, right. you don't have to kill yourself, so that, to me, that's really ideal exercise. Now, kind of in concluding here, um, in spin classes we don't have to wear helmets and we're all about wearing a helmet, but you don't have to wear a helmet in an indoor <laughs> spin class. But Not what, yet. <laughs> what safety advice would you give to prospective uh, cyclists to, to be safe and not get hurt at a spin class? Um, my biggest um, recommendation would be if you know that you're coming to spin class, make sure that you hydrate a lot the day uh, at your office, at work, 
Mm -hmm. um, drink lots of water, keep lots of fluid going in. Um, that's a big safety issue. Um, you don't want to get in there and, and do all these intervals and, and get your heart rate way up there and not, not have the fluid transfer in your muscles that you need because you're dehydrated. Uh -huh. That's like number one safety. Wear, um, wear good gear. Um, don't wear sandals, obviously. Yeah, you know. yeah. That's that's a good, good um, advice. Keep yeah, you're keeping um, your hair maybe out of your face. Uh -huh. Good idea. Okay. So you can kind of keep keep yourself focused. And, yeah. All and right. always ask for help if you you know don't ever be and and if you need to get more water you know I always say I'd never be ashamed if you get off your bike to go get more water. Yeah. So I say that in every class you because do. that's really important to me that. Everybody get off their bike and go get water yeah. and, and instead of sitting there like, oh, I can't leave my bike. I'll look bad if I, if I leave class in the middle. No, get off your bike and go get water. That's more important. Yes. And, and people do go do that. Yes. And that's, that's great. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Kathy. Well, thank you, that, Anne. Um, I think, I hope we've helped people see the benefits of a spinning class either to Absolutely. get in shape or stay in shape, whatever their needs are. I hope we've assured people that, you know, you can you can do this, and then you can go out and ride a bike and be yeah. with the fastest. Yeah, absolutely. Just from training indoor. Set set your goals for the coming year. And like that gal you spoke yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly how it works too. It's just shocking. It it is. So, so. give it a try. And thanks for joining me. And thank I'll you. see you Friday at Spin. I'm class. excited. Looking forward to <laughs> okay. it. Thank okay. Thank you. Anne. All right. And so. Um, I hope that you did learn something about spin class and maybe see the benefits of that for you so that you can come out and ride with, with us on Northwest B Bicycle Safety Council. We've got a video coming up. This is a video of our 2012 Beaverton, uh, Bi Beaverton, <laughs> I can't even think, Beaverton Banks and Beyond Bicycle Tour. And uh, it's the ride, the event ride that we put on each summer and we'll have it in 2013. Our own Chris Flanagan here shot the video at the ride, and we're going to see what he got for us. And so enjoy this video, and we'll come back with our second guest. Enjoy.
thank you, Chris. That's great footage, and boy, we had a lot of happy riders that day on our Beaverton Banks and Beyond bicycle tour. Again, we'll be doing that in 2013 in August, and it's a way for Northwest Bicycle Safety Council to raise money, and we use that to help put on bicycle fairs in the schools and other um, activities that it would be appropriate, and put helmets on local children's heads. And so I, I hope that you'll support Northwest Bicycle Safety Council. I want to mention, too, that uh, Northwest Bicycle Safety Council will be at the Disney Radio Festival of Giving on December 2nd at, the, at Cedar Hills Crossing. We'll be there from 12 to 4 that day. And come on out and show your support in this kind of season of giving. I, I hope you will feel uh, compelled to, to help Northwest Bicycle Safety Council in this local community endeavor. So our second guest is Aaron Miller. Welcome, Aaron. Well. And Aaron is the principal at Vernonia Elementary. Of course, Vernonia Elementary is in Vernonia and Beaverton Banks and beyond. Beyond is Vernonia. On our bicycle ride, we go all the way out to Vernonia. And we're going to learn from Aaron about his conversation kind of with, with Bruce Buffington recently about uh, bicycle fares and that sort of thing. So thanks for joining us, Aaron. Hi, and thanks for having me. And let's talk a little bit about, about you first. Um, tell us about your journey into becoming principal at Vernonia Elementary. Well, I started out as an instructional assistant in the Lebanon area. I, I did that for a couple of years and decided that I really wanted to go into teaching at the elementary level. I went back to Oregon State, got my master's, uh, taught in the town of Sayo, uh, very close to Lebanon mm -hmm. for 13 years. And then I went and got my administrative license, and I've been in Vernonia for the last eight. So you're really a, a small town kind of guy, huh? Yes, I do. <laughs> I do. I do like the small town and the rural area. Well, you sure picked a beautiful, but Vernonia is sure a nice area. So tell us about your role as a principal. What does a principal do these days? <laughs> uh, many things. Uh, the, the most important, I think, is to be the instructional leader and help kids learn everything uh, that they need to know in terms of state standards and preparing them for their future in high school from my perspective and then on to college uh, after they've left our town. Boy, that's, a, that's pretty ambitious. <laughs> that's, <laughs> so what's your management style for a bunch of elementary kids? Um, firm but gentle. Uh, it's important that there are boundaries and kids know what we expect of them, uh, but it's also important to understand that they're, they're kids and uh -huh. they're learning academics and they're learning behavior and uh, how to get along with others at the same time. And those are all pieces that make them a well-rounded citizen. Well, th thanks for helping with that. It's, <laughs> we, we, it's, it takes a village, right? It certainly <laughs> does. It takes us all. Um, now, are you a bicyclist? I certainly am. I have been uh, since I fell off and got back on when I was little, and uh -huh. I continue to ride. And what kind of riding do you like to do? Uh, a lot of the riding I do is on the uh, Banks Fernonia Trail uh, that's close to home, and mm -hmm. I'm fairly busy with my work, so I need something that's close. Uh, I also live uh, fairly close to the school, and I bike to school each day. Do you? Yes. Well, that. That seems like a great example for the kids, then. Um, I think so. Uh, bicycling is a lifelong activity, mm -hmm. and we encourage that a great deal in our students in many endeavors. And uh, I think riding to school is a good example. I wear my helmet every day, and uh, I'm on those kids all the time that uh, don't have them, and uh, praise those kids that are wearing it every time. Uh huh. Yes. So you say you like to ride the banks for Nonia or the Vernonia Banks Trail. <laughs> yes, <laughs> depending on, depending on which direction you're yeah. starting from. <laughs> <laughs> so is that your favorite ride, or do you, do you have other favorites that you like? Um, I do enjoy that ride. Uh, we have the lake right there in town, yeah. and it's uh, very peaceful. There's always uh, some type of wildlife there, and um, they usually start out there. It's close to home, and then head down the trail for uh, a few miles, mm -hmm. and turn around and come back. And it's just a beautiful trip through the forest, and uh, peaceful and calm, and uh, that's one that I do enjoy a lot. Well, and being on that nice trail, you don't have to worry about car traffic, so you can kind of zone out a little bit. You can 
transition through maybe going from work to home or solve the world's problems? <laughs> <laughs> there is a lot of thinking involved uh -huh. on the trail, and uh, I do appreciate the fact that we're able to get off of the highway. Uh, it's, uh, it's a narrow road up to Vernonia. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful ride on the road, but not having to worry about the traffic is, uh, is a big comfort. <laughs> it's, yeah, what, what a blessing you have in your community there to be able to use that and your kids can use it too. Yeah, we're very lucky. So how does your student body typically get to school? Well, being a rural school, uh, a lot of our students live out of town. Uh, so we have a great number of students that bus to school, uh, but we also have uh, a pretty steady group of kids that bike and uh, a number of kids that walk to school. Um, but the majority do come by bus. That makes sense. Now, is there a mileage distance? Like, you have to be, if you're within a mile, you need to walk or ride your bike or something like that? Yes, that is, I believe, one mile uh -huh. is the, um, the typical cutoff. Uh, there are exceptions sure. made in there for other things. But uh, generally, if you're more than a mile away, mm -hmm. then busing is provided. OK. Um, recently, Bruce Buffington met with you to talk to you about having a, a bicycle fair out there at Vernonia Elementary. And so how did that come about that you and Bruce got together? Well, one of our instructional assistants, Eldonna Williams, uh, she volunteered for a bicycle safety event with Bruce. And uh, she mentioned that it went very well. Uh, it was a great way for kids to learn more about biking, get excited about it, have their bikes tuned up so they're safe, and also an opportunity to get some kids some helmets, which uh, is an extreme need for all kids. Mm -hmm. um, so I contacted Bruce and he came out and talked and we set up a date and uh, we are going to be holding our bicycle fair this uh, May. Great. So what exactly did you and Bruce discuss? What did he tell you he, he had to offer? <laughs> well, he had to offer a lot. Uh, he offered, uh, as I said, to come out and run a bicycle fair for us. Uh, it allows kids to go through an obstacle course and do some basic skill training. Uh, it gives them a chance to have their bicycle looked at and tuned up if there's anything uh, major wrong or even some minor adjustments. And then they also uh, fit the students for helmets. And that is something that is an extreme need in our community. Uh, we have over 50% free and reduced lunches, uh, which is how the government rates poverty level mm -hmm. in school systems. And so we have a lot of students that uh, have a tough time purchasing a helmet just because of lack of funds. So this is a great way for us to encourage bicycle safety and the other piece that I really liked is that Bruce involves uh, community members. Mm -hmm. It's not just a group of volunteers from the bicycle uh, club coming and helping. They're there, mm -hmm. but they also encourage uh, local people to come and get involved and help out. And I think the more things that we coordinate with adults and students uh, working together, uh, that that's a great way for kids to see role models and see that uh, their parents and the community members value them and feel that they're important. And that's an interesting perspective. That's and that's exactly why we wanted to talk to you because you have a different perspective th than we do. You know, in some ways. So what? I mean, you kind of went into this, but what were your thoughts as Bruce described this? Were you? I mean, getting excited about the notion or? Any kind of the pros and cons? Were there any cons? Um, not really. Uh, when I was teaching in SIO, we brought in a bike fair a couple of years for our students there. So I've seen how important mm -hmm. that is and what kind of an impact it has on, on kids. And uh, I think it was more just going through the details instead of uh, Bruce selling what he uh -huh. had to offer. I, I knew that this was a good thing for our kids and wanted to make it happen. And why did you think it would be a good idea for your student body? Again, you've kind of touched on that, but what do you think your students are going to come away with next, next spring? I hope they come away with uh, 
another thing that pushes them into that lifelong activity that they'll continue to ride and appreciate uh, the outdoors and exercise. Uh, the other thing, uh, obviously, the safety piece is a biggie for mm -hmm. me. I want to see those kids with helmets on. I want to see them uh, when I go by. I want I want this tapping my helmet uh -huh. to say, nice job, I recognize you're wearing one, as opposed to, <laughs> you need to get yours on. Yeah. And, and the idea that if, if they have a need, they can get one. Yes. Because that's, you're right, that's an issue for many families. And if they m manage to scrape together some money for a bike, they often just don't have anything left. And especially if they're more, more, than, more, more than one child. Yes. get those helmets and so that's that's great and we we love that yeah, well even those students that do have uh, opportunity to purchase a helmet and their family does have those resources uh, there will be a lot of those students that show up too it's not just about getting yeah. the helmet it's about learning a, about bicycle safety learning some basic skills uh, things to watch out for on the road uh, there's a lot of uh, safety aspects besides just the helmet. Now, have you had any other input from other people, n knowing that this is coming up? Uh, are other people in your in your school excited about this idea? Uh, they are. Uh, they know that it's a, a need for our community, and um, I think they're looking forward to our date in May. Yeah. Now, I think of Vernonia as being a small town, and and uh, you know, you think of like in the Portland metro area, certainly bicycle safety is key and safe routes to school. You don't think of that as so much of an issue in a small community like Vernonia, but you think it is. Why is that? Well, we have a state highway that runs through our town. Uh, highway 47 goes right through the, through the middle, um, and the majority of students that are coming to school walking or biking are on that highway at some point and they're being a natural resources community we have a lot of log trucks that mm -hmm. come through so it's just critical for our kids to have that safety awareness and um, it's it's easy in a small town uh, to be lulled into into uh -huh. that safe feeling but uh, we have the opportunity to have accidents where we live as well and i want our kids to be prepared so that uh, they don't get hurt well, and Bruce always makes the point that teaching kids to be safe bicyclists in turn gives them a, a head start on being a safe motorist, a safe driver. Without a doubt, without a doubt, those, those students that learn those skills and how to handle themselves, whether it's walking or biking on a highway system and in the road system, I think it does give them a leg up when, when they hit 15 and 16 and we're turning over the keys to them. Yeah. And I suppose, again, a rural community, maybe they would be more interested or have a need to drive than maybe where there's more public transportation. Yes, we're 45 minutes from everywhere, so <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to do anything that's outside of town, you're, uh -huh. you're going to be on the road system for quite some time. So, so parents are probably anxious for them to drive, too, so that they get a break. <laughs> Now, was there anything in particular that Bruce, it sounds like you were kind of pre-sold on this idea because you knew what a bike fair was. Was there anything in particular that Bruce said that really, that the helmet issue certainly was one, but... The helmet issue and again that um, community involvement. Uh, we, as a town, uh, had a second significant flood in a, the last 11 years. Our school just moved to a new site up above the floodwaters, um, so those those safety pieces are very important, but the community involvement that's helped us get to that spot and enabled us to rise above the floodwaters, uh, that's something that uh, has really brought us closer together as a school, um, as a school staff, and as a community. And so I think the more opportunities that we have to honor that and continue to make uh, working together a priority, the stronger we're going to be as a community. So that was something that Bruce had to offer that I thought was um, a very, uh, very important aspect for us in Vernonia. That, yeah, that's, an, that's a really interesting idea. Um, how do you, so, so the bike fair is going to teach them safety with these little routes and things. Usually they, we have police involved. 
in helping them learn the laws and, and the rules. And like you say, the, the repairs of bikes if kids need it and that sort of thing. Um, at, at, from the kids' point of view, what, what do you, you kind of talked about this, but what do you see the kids, uh, how, how this helps the kids? Um, I, I think the kids are going to be excited to have an opportunity to come to school and ride their bikes on grounds and uh, it's always, uh, you know, when the police show up and the police cars are there and uh, they're involved with helping the kids, uh, I think that gets them excited so I think they're, lo they're looking forward to those pieces. I know several of the students uh, will be very excited to get a new helmet because they understand the importance of being safe and um, it's, that decision's not always up to them. Uh, so I think those are uh, a couple of big aspects that they will enjoy and be looking forward to. Now you, you encourage the kids to wear helmets. These days, is it not cool to wear a helmet uh, or is it okay to wear a helmet? Is there some resistance? What, what's the philosophy from the kids on helmets? I think at the elementary level, uh, kids are still um, very much thinking about what their parents say and listening uh, for the most part to what we have to say at school too. Uh -huh. So I think that message for our kindergarten through fourth and fifth graders uh, is there and they don't think about that. As kids get older and they get into middle school and high school and appearances mm -hmm. become more meaningful. I think that's where we start to to lose kids. Okay. And uh, I, I just think it's uh, a critical piece for them to continue that understanding that safety is important all the time and it only takes once to have an accident where you don't get to go back. Uh -huh. So uh, I really want to make sure that they get that message and hope that we impact them so that when they get to middle school and high school they don't think about the appearance as much. Yeah. But, and boy, that, that's, that's kind of a rough one. Um, now, so you wear your helmet, so certainly example is, is important to kids. Um, do you, do you t talk kind of, well, I think of trauma nurses talk tough, where you tell the reality of a, of a brain injury. Do you think that makes any impact, or what kind of lessons do you try to teach the kids? I, th I think it does. Um, I personally had one of my best friends and a brother-in-law that I never got to meet were both killed on bicycles. Uh, one of them was on a busy highway, had a helmet on, um, and one of them did not have a helmet on and would not have passed away if he had. And so I, sh I share that with kids. I let them know that those things are real and that they were both extremely accomplished bicycle riders. They were cool, but if they would have, you know, if, the, if my friend would have had a helmet on, um, he would have had a chance. Boy, that, I, I'm, I'm sorry that you have those stories to tell, but hopefully it makes a difference to the kids, because you're right, the, the real stories yes. are more impactful than, than just theory. If you had a magic wand to wave in the Ver Vernonia area to make things better for kids riding their bikes in your area, what would you do? Um, as, as much as our community has a lot of dedicated bike paths with the Vernonia Banks Trail and then continuing on with the Crown Zellerbeck Trail, which will tie us into the Scapoose area, um, I think more bike trails that are dedicated just for bikes like paths within town that mm. would help lead them to school. Uh -huh. um, one Coming from one end of town, we have a pretty good system to get kids on bikes up there, but coming from the other direction, uh, it's a little dicey. So I would love to see dedicated bike paths everywhere to make it uh, possible for people on bikes to avoid cars easier. Uh huh. Now you mentioned this other bike path that what did you call it, the Crown Zeller Track? Crown Zeller Track Trail. There uh -huh. is a trail, uh, it, it is similar to the Vernonia Banks Trail in that it is on old railroad um, grade. Mm -hmm. And this particular section of trail is now open from Scapoose uh, all the way to Vernonia. 
and there's about a mile, two miles that they are still working on getting the trail to connect to the lake in Vernonia. Oh. Once they do that, there will be a continuous bike trail, walking trail, horse trail, all the way from Banks up to Vernonia and over to Scapoos, basically to the Columbia River. Right. So that's, uh, that's quite a little chunk of uh, bike path. That is really exciting. And I, I remember at the grand opening of the Vernonia Banks Trail, you know, people from Vernonia came down to Banks, and it was a big celebration opening that linear park that was now all paved. And Vernonia was just really excited, the, the representatives from your community. They were so excited to have this opening up, and they were really enthusiastic, and, and they talked about other trails going off. Uh, from there, so you really got an enthusiastic group about cycling. Are there any other rides that you can think of out of the Vernonia area? Maybe not on paths, but just that that people like to do. Well, I know that we have uh, we have a lot of visitors come through town when the when the weather's nice in the summer, and um, even when it's not, we have a lot of bicyclists come through. And uh, I know, besides taking those paths, there are a lot of people that will head from Vernonia through to Astoria on Highway 202, I believe it is. And, uh, and I know that is a very popular one, takes you along some rivers and through the forests. And again, it's, it's that aspect of getting off of the busier mm -hmm. highways and having an opportunity to have that nice, safe, peaceful bike ride in the woods. And I, I, I was up there in October and you have a lot of nice little cafes and things in the community, so if you ride up there, maybe from banks or wherever, there's a nice opportunity for you to visit the town, enjoy a meal or a drink or something, and then do go wherever you're going to go. Yes, indeed. We, have, we are a good stopping point. So. Yeah, and it's just a few blocks off, off the trail. It's really no big deal. Yeah, uh, the main part of town is uh, only three blocks off of the trail, um, and businesses are uh, very supportive of bicyclists. I know there are, are the cafes have bike racks and uh, really want to cater to, to that clientele because we do have a number of groups come through each year. Uh-huh. It's a, a great area to ride. Um, let's see. So... Um, do you know of any other uh, riding around there, any other directions that a person might go on their bicycle? Uh, you know, there are a lot of trails uh, that are out there at Stubb Stewart State Park, ah. the state's newest state park, and I know they are, are working on developing that trail system um, and expanding it as we speak. So I would encourage people to come and check out uh, that area and look at what they have to offer and um, give suggestions to the park too about what they would like to see in future runs uh, if they want more trail riding or if they want more um, cruising trails. Uh, I think that they would be interested in hearing that input so that they can plan for their future. I think you're right. I think the people at Stubb Stewart are interested in, in input. They want to really make that a park that, that draws people so they want to know what people want. Let me ask you a question about that Crown Zellerback Trail. Is that just hard pack or is it paved? Yeah, that is uh, just hard pack at this point. Uh -huh. uh, there's several spots that are gravel and more of a wood, uh, a wooded path. Uh, but the plans are to to have that paved as well, um, and I think that's an important aspect. Uh, it's critical for having it be accessible for everyone, yeah. touring bikes included. I think you're right, that made a huge difference in, in the Banks for Nonia as far as how popular it is now. Yes. And, and um, people loved it as a mountain bike trail, but boy, it's really taken off now that you can ride your road bike on yeah, it. Yeah, that multi-use uh, really has made an impact on how many people are able to take advantage of the trail. Well, we use it in our Beaverton Banks and beyond, and thank you, Aaron, for coming on the show and talking to us from, from a principal's perspective about how Northwest Bicycle Safety Council can help your community 
with a bike fair and, and how you're looking at that. And so we're happy to come to your school and help out. Thank no, we you. We certainly appreciate it. Thank we're, you. We're looking forward to it. So thanks to our guests for joining us. And I, I hope that you've gotten a little information about spin classes and a little uh, insight into what Northwest Bicycle Safety Council does in communities as far as putting on bike fairs and helping schools teach their kids how to get to school safely, how to ride bikes safely, and what the laws are, uh, even repairing bikes and making sure that children have helmets on their little heads. And uh, I hope that you will support Northwest Bicycle Safety Council. Let me mention again that we'll be at the Disney Radio Festival of Giving on December 2nd from noon to, to 4 o'clock at the Cedar Hills Crossing. And so you're welcome to stop by there and say hi. I think Bruce will be out there. And we do promote safe cycling through our bike fairs and so on. So please wear your helmet and obey the law. Um, let's be sure and use our hand signals out there. I've noticed cyclists just pedaling along and not giving any indication what they intend to do. So remember to use those hand signals and tell motorists and other cyclists what you intend to do by signaling with your hands and use those bike lanes as I described earlier. If you're wanting to get out and ride, Bruce and I offer some pretty easy bike rides throughout the year. Look for our rides at pwtc.com easy beginner type rides and we'll be happy to mentor you and get you out enjoying this great sport of bicycling and as Aaron said this is a lifelong sport not just for kids but for adults. Thanks for joining us.